The Swartland will not be the Swartland we know today unless the Moliners have been really so changing everything there. It's, uh, they've been putting the limelight, they were not the only one, there were all this group of Swartland uh, revolutionaries that really identified these unique terroirs and specifically these old vines uh, to make the best of sometimes road style blend based on Syrah, now moving more to Grenache and the Chenin Blanc. But the Syrah has always been something special in the art of the Moliner family. And we have now the Syrah 2019, wine of Virgin Swatland. What do you think of it, Cathy? It's an incredibly complex wine. And it really does speak to the Swatland from whence it comes. So there's lots of ripe red fruit that immediately jumps at you right out the glass. But it's quite difficult to actually um, pinpoint what it is. I think it's more red plums than red berries. You've got red um, plums, you've got red black uh, black red cherries these yes. very ripe ones absolutely so it's more red black spectrum um, than blue black or strawberry spectrum so not any of the berry things there's also some dried herbs for me on the nose obviously the fan boss some earthiness and then a little bit of floral elements as well um, not lily which you norm I normally associate with the Rhone but it's more of a violetic character. Yeah, it got a violety perfume on the nose, yes, clearly. Yes, a little yes. bit as well. Yeah. And then um, on the palate, it has um, sort of beautiful rounded tannin structure that just seems to give the wine form without being abrasive anywhere. It's a very ripe wine to me. It's uh, but in a ripe wine, in a good sense. I don't listen to me carefully. Ripe doesn't mean overripe, and we often tend to cross the bridge very easily between oh, ripeness yes. and overripeness. Uh, saying ripe here is like you said. The spectrum of fruit move from red to dark red, but not cooked red. No. And and I would almost be tempted. I had some hints of blueberry in it, which tend not to be associated with Syrah, but in that uh, spectrum of red fruit, I was a bit confused. While when you go on the palate, you have a, a, a texture and a grippiness, because Syrah can be a fairly tannic cultivar. We're not talking about Grenache here. No, We're talking about true. pure spices. And on the palate, I felt much more of pepper, black and white, uh, almost more black, than white pepper, but the perfume of the violet on the nose, that's now when you leave the glass, mm. get some air, the violet is a clear marker on that one, which is often as the owner of Petrus who said, you know, can only make a great one if it smells like violet oh, really? somewhere. Clever yeah. man. So the other thing about this is, um, Although the fruit is full ripe, um, it's only 13.5% alcohol, but it is still also incredibly dry. But if you think about it, it's only got 1.4 grams per litre of sugar, and the fruit is so ripe that it is actually adding that little cushion of sweet fruit just to cushion everything and stop it from being austere in that respect. I mean, it's still a young wine in... in old world styles, 2019 being the wine that's three years old, uh, I know the market wants something for more immediate consumption. But that's a wine that needs to be given time uh, to evolve. And we can see with so much primary fruit and sweetish, sweeter fruit, this sweet cushion of fruitiness, which is not coming from the alcohol, because like you said, with 13 and a half, that's really the juiciness of, of the fruit, which is making the wine so balanced. And Yes, maybe it's one of the beauty of, of Swartland to be able to deliver such a great ripeness without yielding 15 alcohol or 16 alcohol. And, and it sounds so bizarre because Swartland is a warm place, therefore you believe that the vines would stress, but all vines and the specific terroir of Swartland make that Syrah blossoms, and that's a great example of it. And I think... Uh, and suspect that some of the fruit that goes in there is trellised but I think most of it is actually bush vine and they respond really well 
to drought conditions and to warm conditions because the vine is free, it's allowed to regulate itself. And mostly it's, it's mostly protected from sunburn. Yes. And we all know um, with global warming, our, in places like Swartland, but everywhere in Stellenbosch, in Paul, in Wellington, our vines can be now sunburned when they're trellised, while classic bush vines allow them to be more, they have their own little umbrella. Correct. Always a beautiful wine. Always, Always a beautiful a wine. The Swartland Syrah from Mulino 2019. And it's so juicy. I mean, the, the word to finish that wine, to finish my comment, is juicy. Correct. It's juicy. Thank you.